Hi everybody, welcome back to the Dahlia Society. My name's Kristen and today I'm going to give you a review on a couple of patterns I've recently made, the Pietra pants and the Wilder Gown top. Well, if you're new to my channel and you love anything to do with sewing, don't forget to do all the things. You need to click the little subscribe button and hit the notification bell. That way you will be alerted to any new episodes when they are uploaded and you can keep on track with my channel. Now, these are a couple of patterns I have had on my mind to make for quite a while. Um, you know those patterns when they're released and they get um, totally saturated uh, in Instagram and all over social media and you think, okay, I'm gonna get that pattern, I'm gonna make that one day. And then you just sort of leave it behind and wait for the right time or the right fabric. Well, these are those two patterns. And I'm gonna talk you through firstly what I've got on up top here. And this is the Wilder Gown Top um, by Friday Pattern Company. The Wilder Gown actually comes in a dress form pattern um, and I downloaded the PDF quite a while ago for that. The Dress version I wasn't totally sold on. I've seen it on a lot of people. I've seen it on people that have loved it and people ha that have not liked it at all. The people that have been happy with it, i found, uh, are the ones that have styled it and had a really clear vision in mind what they wanted it to look like as far as what kind of fabric they were gonna use and what kind of a feel they wanted to give to their garment and what they wanted to pair it with. Uh, the majority of the people that have made this have had issues with not knowing whether it's their style or not and it's a very hard thing to decide whether something is genuinely your style or that you just like the style of it but it's not really you now i found that when i made this i wasn't 100 percent sold on having this big voluminous dress so i thought i'd make a twirl of the top first just to see if it's you know it's what i wanted i had this leftover crepe in my stash for over a year now and i've just had quite a bit of it not knowing what to do with it and i thought look i'll make it a twirl see if it's like um, the style I'm after. Now a few little things that I'm not totally sold on. I don't particularly always like a lot of bulk around my neck. I feel that it's just, um, it doesn't suit me and I prefer to have things uh, a little bit more open. Although I love the look of it on other people. So it's, I don't know if it's just me, it's a personal thing, or if I really know what I like and, um, and I should just stick with that. Um, I prefer this. I've seen it styled on a lot of people um, and it's looked beautiful. And I thought, no, I think I could get away with that. But when I put it on myself, it's like, mm, not really sure. And I think I prefer to wear it open. So I'll show you how you can style it differently. I've seen it on people that have just had it open and then they've uh, pushed up the neck band with the tie and just left it like that. Now I think that to me is more me it's more what i'd wear every day to day um i made the short sleeve and most people have made it in the longer sleeve i've also seen people do it in the longer sleeve with the volume and having the elastic around the bottom i think that looks gorgeous i think amanda from i sew a lot might have made one of these recently and it looked really stunning on her and she added the um the elastic around the bottom and it really finished it off nicely it's a really easy make i must say everything i've made from friday pattern company has been very well put together really great instructions and just takes you through from start to finish and a fantastic beginner uh, pattern for especially for a blouse with a raglan sleeve i think that anything with a raglan sleeve is just so easy to piece together if um, inserting uh, sleeves is not your thing or you're not uh, confident with that a raglan sleeve is great uh, a great way to start especially with a blouse there's not too many blouses or dresses with the raglan sleeve so i'm really liking it with the open neckline and I thought, no, I think it's more something I wear over jeans. Um, although I paired it with the Pietra pants today, I'll give you a little bit of a look what I've done with it. I've got it tucked in today, but I probably would wear it um, out, blouse out over jeans more. Now I'll give you a look at the Pietra pants so you can see the whole look. And I've tucked the blouse in because I think the waistline of these pants is absolutely stunning. And I'll give you a little bit of a twirl so you can see how I've styled it. Okay, so I've got high-waisted pants. I've tucked the blouse in because it's quite a cropped shorter style blouse if you're making it just in the blouse style but it'd be quite easily um, hatched into a longer style blouse with the, even the first ruffle if you wanted to add that on the, onto the bottom. I've got to say I absolutely love these pants. I am just totally sold on them. I think they've got the styling perfect so I'll get onto that in a moment uh, and I'll talk you through the Pietra pants. But the Wilder Gown top, I would, I'll show you what it looks like out. 
Now, I would, as I say, I would wear this normally over jeans. I think next time if I'm gonna make it for jeans, I would lengthen it. Um, I'd probably add about 10 centimeters onto the bottom to get more of that tunic style. And I made the size 14. I think I would even maybe size up around the middle. I'd keep, definitely keep the 14 around the top. Um, but if I wanted to wear it as a tunic style, I would size out around the bottom. So I'd probably grade it to a 16 around the, the middle area, which is really easy to do. Um, so it's got the seam down the front as well. And you'll see the gathering around the neck. That's one thing to get used to. When you first put it on, it does feel a little bit strange. Um, you can feel like your, your gathering isn't quite even enough and you, you know, you fiddle around with it till you get it perfect for you. I think if I'm gonna wear it open, I will probably tie these little ends just to keep it stabilized here. Um, but yeah, I've made this in a crepe as well. So this, I think I had about 1.5 to two meters of crepe left and it was enough to do the short sleeve blouse version. If you're going to do it in a dress, of course, you're going to need a lot more fabric. And I would recommend this, uh, as they have on the pattern instructions, for anything drapey, sheer, like chiffons, georgettes, um, viscoses, anything with a lot of drape and a lot of flow to the fabric. Even I've seen it done in a really nice sheer um, georgette or chiffon fabric with like an under petticoat or under dress. That looks lovely as well because you've got all that volume but because it's sheer, it seems more soft and romantic. It's got a really romantic look to it. That sort of boho-esque style, I really like that look, um, but I'm just not totally sold on having the neck done up. I think that if I had a really sheer fabric, possibly I'd get away with that and put like a cami underneath. But with having um, you know a darker color and quite a lot of volume of fabric with a crepe, it's, you know, it's a satin back crepe, it's quite, it's got quite a good body to it for a soft drapey fabric. So yeah, it's really a personal thing. I think that, um, I think it's just a matter of experimenting. If you really like the style, you can style it back with different things and find your version of that. Um, I'll show you the other version I made in this, uh, in a black. I may had a black viscose that I just had around as a basic for quite a while. And I thought I'd make the long sleeve version in this. So I'll pop some video and some footage of me modeling that one. together the blouse was so basic because you just got your front you've got your, your little bit that you do down the front with the seam um you know I overlocked the um the seam down there as well and this little bit here you just fold in and you'll stitch you'll have it like basted together at the top and then you'll do your stitch line for your top stitching for your neckline and then you'll unpick the basting line so it's a really really good easy way of getting that nice clean stitch line around the collar and a lot of things with plackets I find are really quite fiddly to get that nice straight stitch around the neckline so I think that's a fabulous way they've shown to do that the only bit of mucking around with this top would be when you're making the ties is you're inserting them through the tunnel that you'll make. The tunnel is quite easy to make because you're uh, virtually folding over the neckline in on itself and you're doing the two lines of stitching that will then create your tunnel that you will feed through your um, your ties. So really easy to make and, and then you can adjust your neckline to whatever ever kind of um, width you'd like. So um, very, very good for um, getting a fitted look to a blouse without the fiddly fitting side of things. So I think it was, it's a very cleverly designed pattern. Now we'll get onto the Pietra pants. Of course, closet case is a, an absolute favorite of mine. I think everything she makes has got that little bit of polish to it. Every time I've made a closet case pattern, I've absolutely loved the attention to detail, the attention to instructions, and also the, the fabulous um, drawings that she's given you and the instructions. They really do hold your hand right the way through the whole pattern. So I'd say I'd even be heading into more of intermediate um, territory for a sewist. I think the, the thing I liked most about this blouse was the fact it was such a quick, easy make. I think there's quite a few things there that you might be a little bit scared off with if it's your first time sewing, but definitely heading towards advanced beginner or intermediate sewers. But in saying that, if you, you know, I think you can tackle anything if you take your time and slowly sew through it, really read the instructions through from start to finish so you don't miss any steps. I'll step back so you can see a little bit of the, um, the stitching on the front panel of these. I love the high waist that she's given there and the interfacing on the inside of the waist gives that beautiful support. Now I'm a real keen high-waisted pants where I love the, the nice silhouette they give. And the thing that I love most about these pants is the beautiful slanted pockets with the inner facing as well. So it gives this beautiful structure 
when you have them on you just feel like a million dollars i love these pants i definitely recommend these pants i have got in mind another few more pairs i want to make a tensil pair i want to make a light chambray pair uh, a black pair and i'd like to experiment as well with the narrower leg next time this is the wide leg and i actually did them in a uh, a long length but they were so long and like i'm five foot six nearly five foot seven and for me they were giant and i think that if you're gonna make them as a full length style if you're quite tall you'll have no problem at all if you're average to a shorter height then you will probably be best to make the three quarter length and they probably will be a full length on you so just be aware of that they do take up quite a bit of fabric you're heading towards the 2.5 to 3 meters because that is because there's so much um, with the seams and the um the connecting pieces you'll find there's like two pieces for the front and the back the way it's put together is quite unusual but i think that's what gives it the edge on the styling that um, i haven't seen any other pants done quite like these so really happy with the way they've turned out i'll give you a little twirl so the seam line runs down the front you've got the placket at the front and you've got the stitch line as well there and the slanted pockets and there's quite a bit of top stitching i think just think it finishes it off beautifully the back you've got the elastic back i've got the fit quite nice i've gone for the size 16 because i was in between sizes and i know closet case don't run overly big and they um, concentrate more on the fitted side of things so i wanted to make sure that um, i had the fit right around the middle uh, and i thought if i make uh, the size 16 i can always taper it in a little bit more and i think i've got it perfect i think if i was going to do anything again I would probably stick to the 16 around the middle and maybe taper in towards a 14 but i really don't know if i i think it just depends on the fabric and the fall the, the drape of the fabric too so with linen sometimes linen can grow a little bit when you wear it so i think it would really depend on yeah, your fabric and, and how it looks and what kind of drape it's got but there is quite a few fabric suggestions for the pietra pants um she does suggest things like chambray linen now this linen is quite a sturdy linen quite a heavy weight linen but you don't want to use anything too heavy weight because with the gathering of the elastic you can get quite a bit of bulk there with the pleating so if you're going to use a denim use a light very lightweight denim um, but I have seen it in beautiful tensels and viscose um, and rayons for that beautiful drapey effect too. So a really great pattern to experiment with fabrics. And I think it's the kind of staple thing that you'd want quite a few pairs of these in your wardrobe for all seasons. Now the closet case Pietra pants come in two different size ranges. Size range one is zero to 20. Size range two is 14 to 30. So if you cross over on either of those, just think about whether you might want to size up or down. And don't forget you can make these in shorts as well. So you can go for the shorts, which will look beautiful for summer. You could uh, increase the length if you wanted it more on a longer length short. And the pants, as I say, you can do a narrow leg, you can do a wide leg, you can do a long length in both or a three quarter. Um, you can really experiment with um, with the length that you like. Don't be afraid of sewing pants. I think that pants is one of those things that when you go out and try and go clothes shopping and you realize just how horrendous it can be trying to find a pair of pants that fit you properly especially you know if you're more towards my age and you get heading towards your 50s and you find that everything is just around the waist you either get too low or too high you can't get anything in the middle um that are flattering around the middle section and even with jeans particularly it's so hard and so disheartening to go shopping so you really realize how great it is to be able to sew your own clothes and get your perfect fit for a pair of pants there's no better feeling because i love wearing pants it's something that i, I would wear these for just an everyday look and i would pair them back with you know maybe a knitwear in winter or a, a, like the um maybe this yellow top for summer um, with the linens together i love that look and it's a sort of thing too that you can wear a cropped style blouse and, and look quite flattering or you can tuck in a longer blouse as well if you had the the narrower legs you could even wear a tunic style blouse so it's really a quite a good mix and match pattern that you will be able to wear in your wardrobe for an everyday look so i think yeah if you have trouble shopping for pants especially shopping online for pants can be just a disaster when you need to be trying things on try giving pants a go and you won't be disappointed you'll find that you really get that confidence when you learn to sew your pants yourself and there's so much troubleshooting online that you can look into if you have problem with the crotch being too high or too low and you want to modify that there are so many ways to adjust that and there's so much help online with fitting so um, yeah don't get disheartened if you've tried pants before and they haven't worked for you i think these are a fantastic fantastic style pants 
for really all shapes and sizes. So I'm going to be sewing up more pants heading into autumn and winter. I'm going to keep trialing different pants that I find because I know a lot of people have suggested that they want more pants shown. I think it's just something that people, as I say, aren't as confident to sew and they want to make sure that um, I, you know, I can be your guinea pig. I can try things out myself. And especially things too, if, you, if you're into in between sizes, it can be very hard to find that right fit. So uh, to make your own pants is the perfect opportunity to get your perfect fit. I decided to go for the fusible interfacing that was a little bit up from the, the uh, lightest weight, so more of a medium weight, because I think with the structured fit, you really need to have that stability and it really does hold you in nicely. So I think um, it, it just gives you a bit more confidence when you feel like there's something supporting you around the middle. For me personally, anyway, that's what I look for in a good pair of pants. So. Um, um, yeah, don't, don't be put off by when you first sew them up, you'll see that they look quite high and you'll think, oh, that looks really high waisted. But when you try them on, they just feel fantastic. Um, and I really think it, they're worth a try. And hopefully you guys will have some success with them and let me know how you go if you've sewn them before. Have you guys liked them on? And if not, why? Um, if you've loved them, what kind of fabric have you done them in as well? Thanks again for watching today on the Dahlia Society. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you've liked it, please give me a thumbs up. And I will be back as soon as I can for a new episode. So everyone keep positive, keep sewing and keep those spirits up. And as I say, connect with the sewing community, pop over to Instagram, look up some hashtags, look up these, um, these two patterns and find people that have made them and what they've done with them. And I think it really keeps us all interconnected. And especially if we are, we are socially isolated at the moment, I think it's a fantastic way to keep in touch and to feel part of the community. Thanks for watching again. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.